Michael, it's the 121st All-Ireland Hurling Final in this, the 125th year of the GAA. Kilkenny, as you know, going for that four in a row. And among their ranks today, by the way, if you go and look at the number two for them, who is Michael Cavanagh, well, Michael's already had a very, very big week because Michael's wife, Hazel, gave birth to their first child on Thursday last, a boy named Charlie. So the news for the Kilkenny selectors is that there's a young man called Charlie Cavada. He's four days old. More importantly, he's underage for minor for the next 18 years. So congratulations to Michael and to Hazel, his wife. The Artane band as well, back from Boston. They've been celebrating over there the 50th anniversary of the GAA board in North America. They were fated over there as well, I'm told. And from now on, September the 2nd is going to be known as Artane Day in America, in Boston. So the pre-match ceremonial has come to a conclusion. It's time for the anthem on All-Ireland Hurling Final Day. It's the final most people have wanted to see for the past couple of years. Tip have certainly longed for it, and now Kilkenny have the chance to complete their absolute domination of hurling in this country. Michael Dignan alongside me. Yeah, Ger, and straight away the change I expected. Owen Larkin gone centre forward, Richie Power to the wing, uh, Richie Hogan corner forward, Nitty Brennan full forward. Serious looking forward line from Kilkenny, and uh, Tip moving around as well here. Lark Corbett has gone to left half forward as the all-Ireland final gets underway and it is Kilkenny from left to right. Whatever light breeze there is in the first half is back in Kilkenny. Straight away the pressure here on Jackie Turrell but he gets in a very good clearance, a huge one down. Pressure immediately on the temporary full back line, a little fumble back there but they managed to get that ball, Paul Curran in particular. And that's going to be a free out for Tipperary. Nervous, anxious seconds in the opening moments of this All-Ireland final. Yeah, John. Actually, Eddie Brennan has gone uh, wing forward now. So Eddie Brennan right half forward, uh, Owen Larkin centre forward, and Richie Power on the wing. Richie Hogan, Henry Shefflin, and Aidan Fogarty inside. Kilkenny always keep you second guessing where the positioning is concerned. Let's see what they can do now as they're put under pressure at the other end. Dealt with there, however, by Michael Rice, getting it back as far as Brian Hogan, the centre half back. Wig one all the way down the field here. Coming across where there was Declan Fanning, didn't get to it. Instead, it is. Richie Hogan trying to win possession, coming out with it is James Woodlock, centre-half, centre-midfield for Tipperary, straight in there towards Owen Kelly, breaks down towards Noel McGrath, McGrath trying to, well he's lost his stick, getting it across towards Pat Kerwick, looking for the opening score of the match and a big boost for Tipperary if he can manage to get it, but he just puts it to the right of the target. Yeah, and Jared, just to catch up maybe on the tip forward then, Pat Kerwick picked for number 10, Larry Corbett on centre, and John O'Brien on the wing, but inside then you have Owen Kelly, switch corner, right corner for Callan at full, and Noel McGrath in the left corner. I suggested during the week in the paper that I thought Noel McGrath would be over Michael Kavanagh. They're looking for him maybe to exploit. Um, you know, Kavanagh over 30 now playing his 10th final, and McGrath. So there's the ultimate matchup, I think, with the young, the young pretender against the man who's seen it all before. Well, there's a concern here immediately, and the team doctor is in there, Dr. Ty Crowley, to attend to Owen Larkin, last year's Hurler of the Year. What a season he had for Brian Cody's team. That performance last year, 12 months ago, as they consider a substitute, well, uh, I think that was probably their Nadia Comaneci moment, really. It was a 10 out of 10 performance. Can they possibly replicate it this afternoon? PJ Ryan pucking it out. Drop down. They look for it again here. In particular, Richie Power is looking for a big afternoon here. Still battling there with Declan Fanning. Fanning getting it up to his left hand, released outside here to the middle of the field. Inevitably, it's Woodlock carrying it forward here, using the possession cleverly. 
They're working it in here. This is a dangerous moment. Lark Corbett looking for a support player. There wasn't anybody there. You saw the Kilkenny player surrounding him immediately there. The referee going in, blowing his whistle. And I think just trying to defuse that. Yeah, we're going to have a ferocious start. A great taste of the game and unbelievable atmosphere here, Jerry, I think, today. I think the one thing that stands to Kilkenny today, they're so long on the road. If they were playing any other emerging county, they'd have a very good chance. But I think that it's Tipperary. It's really sharpened their guard. You know, they're going for four in a row. I met some Kilkenny people on the way in, and they're saying, if we lose today, the other three don't count. Now, that's a bit drastic, but there you see Jackie Turl, he wasn't budging. And I think the referee's going to throw the ball in, but as you say, he wasn't going to budge there. And certainly Tipperary felt that that was a foul on their man. Yeah, it's a straight on... I suppose you know, pretty clear to me, I must say. Yeah, well, you know, you're, not, you're not going to expect anyone to move out of the way today to let you through, and it's going to be tough going. Anyway, I think it is going to be a throw in at the end of all of that by match referee Dermot Kerwin, who is handling his second All Ireland final. Calnan's okay. Michael Cavanagh ready to line up for duty. Owen Kelly's in there as well. Eventually comes out of that stalemate situation to Brian Hogan. Hogan soloing from his centre-half back position out here towards Richie Power pressure applied by Pat Kerwick who works his socks off nice ball in there towards Henry Shefflin looking for the opening score of the match trying to set something up for his other forwards out there came Richie, Richie Hogan couldn't quite get it up and there was a chop down on this occasion which is penalised by the referee very demonstrative in the way in which he uh, made the call that time, Dermot Kerwin. And a chance for Kilkenny then to get their first point of the match, just to ease themselves into this game. I watched them coming off the bus about an hour before the uh, start of the match here. They looked a bit tense, Kilkenny, I must say. Interesting, they all had a hurley in their hands on the journey up from Kilkenny, just to uh, perhaps reinforce the fact that they are playing in a huge game as Henry Shefflin puts that one over the bar. Such a good free taker, but that was a relatively easy one to start with. And here's the short puck outs I was talking about, you know, trying to miss, trying to get the ball past that half-back line, but straight on top of John Tennyson. And he does really, really well from that clearance by Paddy Stapleton. Hooked, comes out there. Richie Powers come way out from the uh, full forward position. Conor O'Mahony now trying to set something up for Tipperary. Oh! The clearance there resulted in a Tipperary player going down, James Woodlock. I think he's going to be OK. Play continues. Owen Larkin has it. Owen Larkin has the shot, and he puts it to the left, and it's gone wide. First opportunity, really, for Owen Larkin. He was down injured only about two minutes ago. Yeah. Ball is loose there. Tommy goes, in fairness, he goes for the ball. Uh, I think, you know... No doubt about it, he did go for the ball. <clears throat> yeah, I just found it interesting over the last few weeks, DJ Carey, Eddie Kerr, great hurt coming out in his defence that he's not a dirty player. I don't think he is either. The big comment we made this year during the year was against Galway, we felt he should have got the line, but overall he plays on the edge, but that's what makes There's him such a great player. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, no. I mean, players have to play near that edge on occasions, otherwise uh, I don't think their managers would be terribly pleased with them. Pressure again there on Tommy Welch. Needing a bit of support back there, it's Michael Rice. He's a very, very consistent midfielder. Out as far as Tommy Welsh, gets it away down the field. A great catch, brilliantly taken there by Conor O'Mahony. Does well at centre-half back. Taking it here is young Brendan Maher, 20 years of age. Straight to Brian Hogan. Hogan thundering out of defence. He started very well, the number six for Kilkenny. Good block there by James Woodlock, who came across Owen Larkin. Pressure immediately on Kilkenny's cornerback. Owen Kelly over there. Owen Kelly fouled. Free in for Tipperary. And uh, Noel McGraw went to him immediately and said, well done. And it's a chance then for Tipperary to get the levelling score after nearly seven minutes of play. Yeah, Jaron, you know, I would have said Tip wouldn't win this Ireland without Owen Kelly at his best. And he has a bad back in Jaron, but he started really well. He's very, very sharp and he's won the first couple of balls that have gone up between himself and Jackie Terry. Interesting that he's doing the free-taking and not Seamus Callanan. Well, you'd have to have Owen Kelly on the free, Jerry, one of the great free-takers of all time. Well, they have shared it, and Kelly takes this one, and Kelly duly puts it over the bar. Experience, experience has counts for a lot. Taking frees out there is not easy, and Kelly will counteract um, 
Henry Shefflin, you know, two brilliant free tackles. Especially on a, a tense, nervous day like this one. Yeah, clever position them on, on, on uh, Jackie Turrell because McGrath scored four points off Turrell in the league final and Turrell would have been waiting for him today, so clever tactics. Turrell did well on Milan last time. Exactly. Here's Rice, out here as far as Tommy Welsh. <laughs> Leaves it behind, however. Lark Corbett's gone roaming, way out the field. Back in once again by Conor O'Mahony to the inside forward line. Calden getting there, but the ball doesn't reach him. It's in its JJ Delaney, out as far as Tommy Welsh. Diagonal ball across here. A one that caused problems, and it's going to cause problems again. What a very good save by Brendan Cummins. It was there for Henry Shevlin to take, and the goalkeeper got down to deny the Ballyhill Shamrocks player. Well, you remember against Waterford, that ball slipped through and Kilkenny got a goal that afternoon. On this occasion, a very vigilant Brendan Cummins did remarkably well. Yeah. That's a good stop. It is, Jeremy. If you watch what he did, he stayed on his feet. He didn't panic when Shefflin got through. He stayed on his feet till the last minute and went down and made a good save off his left side. So in the follow-up, there's a chance for Kilkenny to get something out of this attack. Henry Shefflin composing himself. This to put Kilkenny back in front again. He's put in wide. They get absolutely nothing. And that's a big moment because Kilkenny have scored early goals in the last couple of All-Irelands. But it just shows you the presence he has. The Parish Maher nine times out of ten have he gone out with that ball. But when Shefflin's lurking behind you, a bit of nerves kick in. That's well caught there by Pat Kerwick. He's fouled on the 45-metre line. And now there's a chance for Tipperary to tap this one over the bar. And they go and can go and take the lead. You mentioned the last couple of years there. You remember Limerick in uh, 07 and Waterford last year, of course, and the concession of early goals effectively ruined the finals. That's right. But not, I don't think you're going to have that type of a game today. Just, it, just, just the movement of the tip half forward. And if you look where, Phil, where Pat Kerry cut that ball, almost in the left half forward position, he's playing right half forward. So that's what they're going to try to do all day is move that half back line all over the place. Michael Rice has been warned by the referee for that last foul. Owen Kelly taking. And Owen Kelly keeping his 100% record going. Two in a row for Owen Kelly, and tip lead by two points to one. Well, the rain has eased. Pitch is going to be soft and slippery, of course, as well. PJ Ryan's puck out, a huge one towards top of the right. Batting it out there is Brendan Maher. Comes straight back down to the unmarked Tommy Welch. Blocked down there well by John O'Brien. Welch after it again, O'Brien after him, Lark Orbert after him as well, still it's Tommy Welch. Catching it brilliantly here is Declan Fanning, who switched across to the other wing. Not the greatest of hand passes over, puts his own man in difficulty. Battling there to take it up was Aidan Fogarty, way out of attack that time. Forward by John Tennyson. Henry Shefflin in there to challenge, comes straight back out again. Conor O'Mahony in there to tussle with him. Podrick Maher now. He's had a great season, Podrick Maher, starting back in the league final, which was a great game in Perlis at the beginning of May between these same two teams. Michael Kavanagh now, cross into open space, Henry Shefflin racing across towards it, shoulder there by Declan Fanning. Still they wait for that ball to come back out, Henry Shefflin still after it, that time he's closed down really, really well by Paddy Stapleton. Great battle between these two great teams. Michael Rice now. Driving it in there, 20 metres out from the Tipperary goal. In there to win it once again, Brendan Maher. Out by Shane McGrath. Huge one, way down the field. Loose ball across here with Owen Kelly going across to try and pick it up onto his stick. First touch wasn't good, much better by Brian Hogue, but then he loses it, he loses it to Seamus Callanan. Callanan setting it up here towards Lark Corbett. Corbett trip going through, back on his feet immediately. The referee allowed an advantage there, but nothing accrued. Comes out towards Noel McGrath. How will he do in this final? He's been great so far. James Woodlock blocked down. Brilliant block. Comes out here to Derek Ling. And Ling, the midfielder, gets it away down the field for Kilkenny once again, where it bounces around there. No quarter given. Not expected as Brendan Maher clears once again for Tipperary. Great start by both of these teams. Callan with the shot. Rather miss hit it. And he's put it wide. It was a good chance for Seamus Callanan who's got three goals and seven points already in this year's championship. Yeah, and you know, I think Dermot Kerwin trying to let the game flow. Some of the tackles, you know, fairly hard, but nice to let it go. Because I think if you start blowing too much too early, you take the flow away. And I just think interesting, Tipperary win a lot of the 50-50 ball so far. It doesn't normally happen to Kilkenny. Declan Fanning taking it down. 
He's a commanding figure on that half-back line already. Playing today in his 24th championship match. Free out for Tipperary. Conor O'Mahony will take this. Their on-field captain, of course. Willie Ryan is the uh, nominated captain, or was before the start of the league in the championship. He's among the subs. So Conor O'Mahony has got four points from freeze already in this year's campaign. Huge distance out on a largely still afternoon, dropping in there dangerously. It was John O'Brien who got the stick to it, and he put it wide. No great complaints from John. Oh, Kelly is challenging it in there, OK? We'll just watch it here now. That's John Tennyson's hand. I think it's 65, yeah. 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 I knew by own Kelly's reaction because sporting player that he is, he wouldn't be looking for it if it wasn't. So it should have been a 65, he but it wasn't. He should be looking for it, even if it wasn't, but he, <laughs> he wouldn't. The awfully way of thinking. <laughs> Back of the centre here is James Woodlock. Driving it down, Kavanaugh under pressure there with Noel McGrath. In comes Lar Corbett. La, 45 metres out, hits the shot and he puts it over the bar. First of the day for La Corbett. As a 19-year-old, he won an All-Ireland medal here in 2001. This time picked that ball up despite the, the attentions of Tommy Welsh and Michael Cavanagh. Got clear and struck it brilliantly. It's 3-1 for Tipperary. From the puck out. Shane McGraw makes an absolutely wonderful catch in the middle of the park and then loses it here to Eddie Brennan. Shortens the grip on the stick and taps it over the bar. First chance that Eddie Brennan has got and he seals that with a point and it's 3-2. After a great catch by Shane McGraw, came down, lost it and Eddie Brennan did the rest. Yeah, he went too high. Yeah. Brilliant catch going backwards but he fell unfortunately and he couldn't just get up and get rid of the ball. A lot of pressure on uh, Woodlock and McGrath coming into this match in the middle of the park. I mentioned in the scenes that their form had been somewhat patchy. That was McGrath again, getting it in now as far as Owen Kelly. After him is Jackie Terrell. Has the composure, has the accuracy, has that skill to put it over the bar. Kelly with three points so far. That the first from play, and it's four points to two. Yeah, and there's no doubt uh, Kilkenny are worried about tip. Um, that ball should have been let go by by Derek Link back, John Tennyson was loose behind him but he, he panicked, went for the ball and good ground ball into Kelly and he's absolutely flying it out in front of Jackie Terry, he's winning every ball there Wind picking up a little bit in the last couple of minutes it's favouring Kilkenny by the way in the first half as Tommy Welch gets the catch there, gets away from Woodlock Tommy Welch settling himself, having a go, firing it in but putting the ball over, over the, the bar. bar, yes it's made it the umpire was tantalising us for a moment Finally got the white flag up, and Tommy Welch over the bar, his second point in this year's championship. And another brilliant score, the quality of the score so far has been exceptional, and Tommy Welch, just leadership there, he wanted to get under that ball. Here's the short puck out again. Yeah, we're back with live play now here again, and it's Eddie Brennan having a go. It's going to drop short into the arms there of Brendan Cummins. Cummins getting away from Aidan Fogarty to his centre-half back, who's Conor O'Mahony. Henry Shefflin's after him, trying to hook him, does well. Into the middle of the park, stopped there by Michael Rice. On as far as Owen Larkin. Larkin has to go and Larkin puts it over the bar. Another for uh, Kilkenny, a first of the day for Owen Larkin. And you see again, Joe, what Henry Shefflin brings to the team. That's what separates him from, from all the players. The work rate and his hunger is unbelievable. He ran 50 yards there to hook Conor O'Mahony and Owen Larkin an easy score. But as you say, Henry effectively made that for Owen Larkin. Kilkenny back again now, wanting to take the lead. That's towards Eddie Brennan's corner. Might drop down here, but drops down for Podrick Maher to take. And the fullback gets it away for Tipperary. Down towards Noel McGraw. We haven't seen anything of him so far. Here's Tommy Welch. Skips away from the would-be challenge. Again, providing the fodder in there for the inside forwards. Henry Shefflin and Eddie Brennan going for it. It's Brennan who gets there. Brennan. Beautiful shot over the bar. Another for Eddie Brennan. Two goals and five points now in this year's championship and Kilkenny lead in the final this year by five points to four. 17 minutes are gone. Yeah, despite all he's won, I think one of the most underrated players of autumn. I think one of the greatest forwards we're ever, we're ever likely to see. Michael Cavanaugh touching it down. Onto it quickly, here comes Noel McGrath, the 18-year-old. 
back out once again. Kerwick shot half blocked down. Comes to Tommy Welch, put under pressure there. 20 metres out from his own goal, going this way and that before eventually clearing it a good 50 metres down the field towards the aforementioned Eddie Brennan. Comes back there towards Conor O'Mahony, slipping it inside here cleverly. Tip mounting another attack. That time it's John O'Brien at that time it's stopped somehow on the goal line by PJ Ryan that was a nervy moment for him out again at the hand pass as far as Tommy Welch and the clearance from his own 20 metre line pressure there on Brendan Maher because Eddie Brennan has got there first and Eddie Brennan is fouled and it's a free for Kilkenny yeah brilliant catch here by Brendan just talking about oh, this, is the, this is the other end PJ Ryan sorry yeah under a bit of pressure there. did well because a goal like that slipped in under the bar against Waterford Tommy Welch it started so well you think there was a couple of them on the field and um, I think you know a lot of players playing very very well on both sides very entertaining match so far certainly is that Henry Shefflin to take this if Henry is the most important member of that Kilkenny team I wonder is Tommy Walsh the second most important he's certainly the most cons consistent after Henry Shefflin as Henry puts that over the bar he is Jaron answer your question six all-stars in a row since he started on the Kilkenny senior team an unbelievable record and he's outstanding out there again today and then you look around the rest of the team, you see last year's hurler of the year, Owen Lark and Eddie Brennan, you were talking about, they've every, got stars everywhere. everywhere. The Back tipper, at the middle again, it up to them. they certainly are. Here comes John Tennyson. Did enough to get it forward here. Brendan Maher, the fullback, racing out for it there with Owen Larkin. He's a good player, the number three. Free out for Tipperary. Tipperary suddenly find themselves two points behind. 19 minutes gone. Paul Brigmar, who came to prominence with Tipperary's back-to-back -back All-Ireland minor winning teams, you might remember them in uh, 06 and 07. Brendan Cummins to take this. Big, huge one, it's got to drop about 13 metres out from the Kilkenny goal. Oh, Brilliantly yes. caught again by Tommy Wells. He must have glue on his hands. How did he stick that one into his paw? Out as far as Henry Shefflin, loses it to Conor O'Mahony. O'Mahony trying to get away from Henry. Henry sticks to the task. Again, there are reinforcements there to help out. Again, they try to work it out with Shane McGrath in difficulty. Brendan Maher in to try and help out as well. Third meeting of the year for these two teams, of course. They met twice in the league. Podrick Maher now off his left-hand side. Down towards Noel McGrath. They've isolated him all of a sudden there with JJ Delaney. The goalkeeper comes out and PJ Ryan gets it away. The That's umpire is signalling a 65. Yeah, that makes up for the last one because I'm sure that was pulled across. Let's look at it again that, here. Yeah, yeah, it came off McGrath. Shouldn't have been a 65, but the one before should. I know there's still two Justice. fairly basic mistakes, though, Jerry. You yeah. know, another final, you know, shouldn't be making mistakes like that. All right, so it's going to be a 65, and Owen Kelly's come out to take it. Uh, score of three points out of four for uh, Tipperary already, of course. I think there's six or seven water, water boys. I won't call the boys, but water. Um, carriers on the field at the moment uh, just shows you the pace of the game so far well they could do with this one because it's some six minutes now since uh, Tipperary scored in this final Owen Kelly taking his time over it and it was well worthwhile another for Owen Kelly and for Tipperary so it's now 6-5 this is just unbelievable the time is not that big eye on the ball all the way brilliant catch and straight away 70 yard clearance Henry Shefflin comes from behind to try and catch that one. It breaks, however, from his grasp. John O'Brien in there to challenge as well. Both managers on the sideline claiming that it should be their ball, but it's going to be a sideline ball for Tipperary. And uh, Brendan Maher lining up for duty. Brendan Maher, the 20-year-old uh, primary school teacher, was captain of the uh, minors here two years ago. It's a good cut-up. Towards Lar Corbett, broken down here. Taken out by JJ Delaney, gets it away once again. Pressure on Tipperary's backline once more. Richie Parr trying to impress. Out comes Brendan Maher once again. And certainly the questions you might ask beforehand about the two Mahers at the back, they've been answered the questions because they've done well. Out as far as Lark Corbett. Lark Corbett's got one already, and Lark Corbett's got a second. Great point. Wonderful score by Lar, and the teams are level once again, level for the third time. Yeah, and that move is certainly working well. Lar's using his pace to great effect, and lovely striker on the run. Well, it's exactly what we would have hoped for, I suppose, 
in the first half after the uh, imbalance finals of the last two years. Oh, brilliant work by Declan Fanning coming out to collect that one. Out into the middle as far as James Woodlock, who's a guard in Kilkenny. Out as far as John O'Brien. In there it goes, brilliantly snapped on there by Owen Kelly, trying to get away from his man, and Kilkenny will not yield an inch, so they give away the freeze, and it might be as good as a point anyway. And that's something that John O'Brien's been doing brilliantly all year. You know, most lads will be tempted to have a goal from there, but John O'Brien is playing that lovely ball inside into the full forward line, and Owen Kelly, as I've said a couple of times already, he's razor sharp. Every ball that's come his way, he's won it. No black cards, but the referee has noted Michael Kavanagh now, so he's ticked Kavanagh and he's ticked Rice in recent times. Yeah, and, and they've Jer been warned. Another thing that's interesting, Kilkenny now are back with Shefflin centre forward, Noel Larkin on the wing. The changes didn't work, the tipped half back line stood up to the early onslaught, and they had to move Shefflin and Larkin back into the positions as Owen Kelly puts it over the bar a fifth point for Owen Kelly and Tipperary are back in front again yeah, super catch and Michael Kavner didn't do an awful lot wrong but he hurled was in around he's stopping Owen Kelly getting the weapon Kelly's had five shots at the target he's got five points so far it's Henry Shefflin as Michael was saying back out at centre forward now here he is winning that ball against Conor O'Mahony hoping to get more change and hoping to open up the middle for Kilkenny Tommy Wellstead spreading it to the angles here. Richie Hogan, huge day for him. Will he deliver? He's delivering right now to try to get away from Paul Curran. And Lark Corbett was after him and hooked him brilliantly. But it holds up the attack for just a moment because Owen Larkin's in there once again. Trying to go by Shane McGrath. Still Larkin, and a hand pass it through. Still there's a chance here. Over there is Derek Ling. Up in the corner and Derek Ling, the midfielder, has put it over the bar. Good score by Ling. His fourth point in this year's championship, first of the day here, and he ties it up at seven points apiece once again. It's a thrilling match in Croke Park. Yeah, Jerry was a great scorer, but how did Kilkenny ever have to work as hard for a score? It was unbelievable. They were closed down midfielders and forwards from Tip, all swarming back around him and putting fierce pressure on them. And that's Kilkenny's style, and Tip are doing it as well, matching them man for man. Cummins is puck out again huge delivery can they win it it's again Kilkenny who win that ball from the puck out by tip and it's Jackie Tyrrell who sends it way back down the field again it breaks beautifully here as far as Richie Hogan out onto the left hand side little shot by Richie Hogan and that will do his confidence a power of good first of the day for Richie Hogan Kilkenny sneak back into the lead once again he got the broken ball here raced onto it great work by the 21 year old yeah he's very very quick hands Superman to pick up a ball like that. Well, the short puck out has been tried time and again. Let's see how it works out this time. The conventional long puck out wasn't working out, and the shorter puck outs has put Tipperary in difficulty again. But this time they cope. Brendan Maher linking up here with James Woodlock. Kilkenny will be hoping that he can last the full 70 minutes. That's a poor clearance straight to Brian Hogan. That's, not very hard. That's a poor ball out. Woodlock was after it, but so too was his colleague in midfield, who's fouled this time, Shane McGrath. Free to Tipperary, trailing as you can see by eight points to seven. Yeah, and Woodlock and Shane McGrath getting on an awful lot of ball in the middle of the field, very athletic figures, and Derek Ling is featuring a bit, but Michael Rice very quiet, who's been outstanding all year. So uh, it'll be Shane McGrath who will hit this one, or will it? No, it's going to be Kelly. Kelly's got to come out to take it. He's done well so far. Five points in the match. Three of them from conventional freeze. One of 65, one from play as well. So showing us the full range of skills. So 65 metres out from the target. In front of a packed crowd at Croke Park. Can he tie it up at eight points apiece? The answer is yes. Terrific striking. Two really good free takers, superb free takers, really in action this afternoon in Owen Kelly and Henry Shefflin. Well, now let's look at the puck outs and see what happens here. The referee, by the way, has gone back down to talk to one of his umpires. Where the puck outs concerned, neither team doing particularly well. Kilkenny have uh, won three of their ten so far, and Tipperary have won four of their ten. So it's not the kind of form you expect. No, both half back lines well on top under the high ball, but. Um, and you know Tipperary will be very happy with the way they've started in this final 12 of them never played in the final before so it's huge for them and it's uh, Tipperary who initially won that puck out from Kilkenny's strike out a goal 
and it's won back again by Shane McGrath. McGrath back down towards Noel McGrath, his namesake, gets on it this time. Trying to provide the pass inside for Owen Kelly, it bounces around, comes off Brian Hogan, the referee blows the whistle, saw an unfair challenge, and it's going to be a free in for Tipperary, and a delighted Lark Corbett already saluting what he hopes will be another point and a lead point for Tipperary with 27 and a half minutes gone. And this time the referee has noted the name of Brian Hogan. Yeah, and George, I think it's a thing we talked about before with Kilkenny, maybe fouling a bit at the back and giving away a freeze. Against Owen, with Owen Kelly out there, he can't do that. Now, I thought that was a 50-50 ball. It broke Looked out the it. field. Both of them went for the ball, were tussling for it. And uh, I think Tip were very lucky to win that free. This is a relatively easy free for Owen Kelly to put over the bar. So another one. And it's now nine points to eight. Let's look at this again and make your own mind up here whether or not there really was a, a case against no, Brian Hogan. No, 100% going for the ball, and uh, if anything, uh, Larry Carver was trying to block him running yep. for the ball. This time the uh, puck out hit towards Eddie Brennan. Linesman on this near side, who is uh, James Owens from Wexford. Signally, it's going to be a Tipperary sideline cut. Such is the uh, way in which this game has seesawed. The lead has changed hands them six times so far. That's a big, long one, but it's an inaccurate one. And it's going to be a, a line ball for uh, Kilkenny. Strange. Yeah, and Owen Kelly and Jojo Lane are having a fair tussle inside there. On the ball and off the ball and before the ball and after the ball. Still there. <laughs> really is a great pity in a way. I know they're lucky, Kilkenny, that they've got Jay Jelani, Jay Jelani, who's such an adaptable player who can play at full-back, but I think his natural position is left off. Possibly the most complete wing-back you know, of the last yeah. 20 years. This time the cut-in by uh, Michael Rice. Works in Tipperary's favour because back there to collect it is Pat Kerwick. Five and a half minutes to go to half-time. Kerwick almost running into a cul-de-sac, eventually gives the ball away. Coming across to clear it here is JJ Delaney. John O'Brien under it with Henry Shefflin of Kilkenny who did enough on it to get it back to Michael Rice who provides the ball inside. This time it's Richie Parr trying to pick it up. There too is Aidan Fogarty, the corner forward. Tipped there in numbers with uh, Brent Porrick Maher and helped out here by Declan Fanning in the green helmet. Gets it away towards Lark Corbett. Lark chasing after this one, taking it down that wing. They're all after him. Richie Parr's after him. Can't get to him. Lark strikes and Lark hits an absolute beauty. A third for Lar Corbett. Three shots at the target, three points, and Tipperary lead the match by two. It's Tipperary 10, Kilkenny 8, Lar Corbett, they were saying beforehand, is he in form? Will he deliver? He certainly delivered a wonderful first half. Yeah, Jaron, you know, you talk about leadership in teams. Lar Corbett and Owen Kelly are the two players from 2001, along with Brendan Cummins. They've got all, Tipper they've got all Tipperary scores, 10 points between them. Uh, Kelly has got five frees out of five of 65 and they've got the four points in play between them and that's what you call real leadership there's no shouting and running out of them they're going along about their business and two of them are having fantastic games nice and cool Henry Shefflin to uh, avail of that foul by Conor O'Mahony just a moment to go and he's got his third point of this match so just a point between them well it's one that Kilkenny certainly needed because uh, they'd gone five six minutes without providing a score so the first half possession so far, Kilkenny just edging it ever so slightly. Lark Corbett's after it again, he does well, gets it in as far as Kalnan. Seamus Kalnan, is there a goal chance on here? Stopped well. That was John Tennyson, got his body in the way. Owen Kelly comes out as well, feeds it across there towards Noel McGrath. McGrath has three Kilkenny players after him. Hand passing it towards Shane McGrath, his namesake, it all breaks down in the end because Kilkenny chased after Tipperary in packs, they were hounding them, denying them space and opportunity, comes out to Owen Larkin, and Larkin frees up that ball and went to his own forward, Hogan's after it, Richie Hogan, he's got a point already, he mishits this time and he puts the ball wide, it was a chance. It was, it's just as well he didn't score because Richie Power jumped straight into Parik Maher there, he wasn't facing the ball at all and it broke to him. You watch the high ball coming in here. Richie Power had jumped straight into Park Maher. There's a little bit of inexperience from Hogan there. He should have made sure to control that and maybe tapped it over the bar. Third wide instead. Glorious chance. 
Brendan Cummins puck out. Tipperary have done well in this first half. They have battled hard with Kilkenny, the champions of the last three years. But the champions have so much class, so much skill all over the park. And they've got Larkin now to try and break through the half-back line. Out towards Eddie Brennan it comes. Brennan going for the target. And Brennan puts it straight between the sticks. It's three for Eddie Brennan. It's ten for Kilkenny. Ten points apiece, close to half-time. Yeah, Joe, what a score. From, like, Brendan Maher is playing very, very well. Eddie Brennan has got three chances and scored a three. But this is a brilliant all Ireland final. It, there's, there's hardly a player on the field who's not playing well, and that's unusual to see. Oh, it's absolutely rip-roaring. Cummins puck out. Dropping it into the half forwards this time, where Brian, where, uh, Brian Hogan collects it. Does well. Semi-final almost passed him by, but today's been very good, Hogan. That ball was well delivered into Richie Parr. Power is fouled, free into Kilkenny, and they can go back into the lead here once again. Yeah, super catch, and we're seeing some great fielding all over the field. Richie, that's the first time maybe Richie got on the ball, uh, but he's, he's back in full forward again now, and, and a great catch. Full credit to the referee as well for allowing this game to flow. It's been hugely enjoyable. Henry Shefflin to hit it and Henry Shefflin to put it over the bar. A fourth for Henry Shefflin. They've all come from freeze and Kilkenny lead by 11 points to 10. Short puck out once again. Out as far as Paddy Stapleton, bypassing midfield, inside towards the inside line, but once... This time it's uh, Pat Kerwick who gets there, does well, but then it came out to Woodlock who couldn't take it. Michael Kavanagh could. Eddie Brennan struggling to contain it, back towards Woodlock once more, Woodlock going through! Out there as far as Owen Kelly, under pressure, what a shot, what a point, what a player! Eight points for Owen Kelly. Yeah, great score again, and you know, maybe we're seeing the benefit of him having a light season now, you know, he's obviously got his injuries sorted out over the last month or so, but he hasn't had that much mileage, he's a lot of mileage on the clock but has a light year this year and he's absolutely flying it out there as well. Well the team's level for the seventh time and there are going to be two minutes of additional play at the end of the opening 35, 82,106 people are enjoying it thoroughly. Hope you are as well wherever you're watching it at home or around the globe. Uh, Jaron, there's a, a friend of mine, Pat Buggy, from Clock Castle Comer and his wife Angela out in the Gold Coast in Australia. Mary, Patricia, and they had a son three weeks ago on the Christmas, they called him JJ, John Joe uh, Buggy, so just say hello to all of those out in Australia. He's going to be a hurler. That's what he's hoping. He's called after JJ, I asked him last night. <laughs> Michael Rice is cut in, is stopped here by Paul Curran. Out it comes again towards Pat Kerwick. Lovely turn by Kerwick to get away from Tennyson. He might have the pace on Tennyson, he has. Gets away, the referee allowed an advantage initially because Tennyson threw his stick, then kicks it away. Up here as far as Richie Hogan. Hogan dancing away from the challenge in stoppage time. Remember, two minutes being played. The pressure there on Porik Maher with uh, Richie Power breathing down his neck. Was he lying on the ball? He was. And it's going to be a free in. Free in for uh, Kilkenny. Porik Maher questioning the decision. But I think the referee says you lay down on it and handle it on the ground. Yeah, just have a look at this now, Rick. Yep. That was harsh enough, you know. He was. He, I don't think he made any deliberate attempt to play the ball on the ground. And anyway, it is going to be a free to Kilkenny, and Henry Shefflin's going to take it from a difficult angle, 20 metres out. Straight as a die. Fifth for Henry Shefflin. So 12 points to 11. Kilkenny shading it, but it's one of those All Ireland finals where you couldn't honestly say who's going to win. Kerwick couldn't hold it. Comes back out again towards the marvellous Tommy Welch. Back once more. Richie Hogan in there. Didn't quite handle it, but it comes instead to Richie Power, who was immediately behind him and anticipating. Declan Fanning now chasing after it. Power's after it again. Hasn't scored so far. He'd love a point. And that's beautifully put over the bar. Richie Power's first. He's injured his hand as well. Bravely carrying it through there. Only 23 years of age. Well, he's a young player who'd only just started primary school yeah. when these counties met in the last final. And his dad was playing in that. And there's two nasty taps there from John O'Brien just when he was going through, and that's why he's down, but he's back on his feet. 
Half time has uh, gone here, the half time whistle. Two points the margin after Henry Shefflin had scored five points for Kel Kenny in the first half. But Tipperary certainly put it up yeah, and to uh, Kel Kenny, as we've just, noticed. Yeah, just interesting there. Liam Sheedy travelled maybe 70 yards across the field to uh, have a fairly serious word with Jeremy Kerwin going off. He's obviously not happy maybe with some of the. Uh, some of what went on in the first half, but I would have thought the referee was fair, maybe one mistake on either side, but overall, he, and, you know, I think he meant to let the game flow and it was very enjoyable. Well, Kilkenny created 18 chances, Tipperary 15, the half-time score is Kilkenny 13 points, Tipperary 11. Second half underway then, the teams were level seven times in the first half. Let's see what Kilkenny can do with their opening attack of this second 35 minutes. Up towards Lark Orbit it comes this time. It's a Kil Tipperary team, by the way, where the half-forward line didn't manage to get a score and only had four shots at the target between them during that first half. Kerwick, Callanan and John O'Brien will have to do a little bit better than that. Their work rate has been very, very high. Derek Ling punished by the referee, he's just ticked him for that foul, it's going to be a free to Tipperary and it'll be Conor O'Mahony who will take it Yeah, Jordan, I just noticed uh, Seamus Callan has gone back centre forward, Lark Harvard has gone in the corner but it looks to me he's going to come out and play out around the field and, you know, look to use his pace to expose Michael Cavan, so Cavan is obviously going to stay back there, so we've another interesting tactic and you have to credit Liam Sheedy, he's had a few ideas here and, you know, it's going to carry out the game plan Well, let's see how, uh, how long they try that particular experiment and how successful it is, Conor O'Mahony now hitting this one dropping dangerously in there, well caught that's Tennyson getting it away with the hand this time, terrible clearance however, putting uh, his colleague in difficulty because Kerwick has it back once again, this time it's towards John O'Brien and John O'Brien walked away from it, wasn't one bit happy with that shot, still to score the uh, Tumi Vara player, well he's an experienced man, John O'Brien, 27 years of age now, he's on the extended panel back in 2001 but didn't actually get to play in that final against Galway. PJ Ryan with the puck out, the Fenians man. Putting up the hand there was Declan Fanning, but it comes back to his colleague, kicked forward by Shane McGrath. In there towards Noel McGrath, they'll be hoping to get more from him or from Kerwick. Here's Kerwick's got a lot of pace, cleverly playing it inside to Calvin. Goal chance! Oh, a save, a brilliant save. What a save! An amazing stop by PJ Ryan. Top drawer. Seamus Kalnan had the goal at his mercy. Worth looking at again. It was a clever ball in by Pat Kerwick. Into Kalnan. Should have scored, but for the intervention of the marvellous PJ Ryan. Made that brilliant save against Waterford as well in the semi final. And this is another candidate for save of the year. Yeah, a brilliant piece of play. But you have to say, look, Jackie Turrell, you know, out to the ball in front and then caught the ball, broke behind him. And Kerwick showed supervision. He did the same against uh, Limerick in the semi final. He was involved in a couple of very clever passes to play. A great ball to Callan, really a low ball into the corner, should have put it away, and a uh, huge miss for Tipperary. Owen oh, Kelly got eight points out of uh, Tipperary's tally of 11 in the first half. This to put one between them. It's going left and it's gone wide. Yeah, Jaron tip of it all, you know, John O'Brien a bad wide, that's a bad wide and a goal chance, you know, that's, you know, maybe four points on the board could be crucial now and uh, tip have started very, very well again in the second half but they can't afford to be missing chances like that against Kilkenny. PJ Ryan's puck out, this time targeting the right half forward, this time it's Tipperary who win that possession and it's Woodlock, the hump shoulders, getting it there towards Shane McGraw, whipping it across here towards Declan Fanning, running into traffic, forward towards Kerwick once again, made that lovely incisive run earlier, this time he's down injured, and the referee's got to halt the action, while well, attention can be given to the uh, Killinall player, known to his pals in Killinall as Festi, that was a terrific run, just moments earlier there by Pat Kerwick, he's taken his chance with both hands this past couple of games, Pat Kerwick are into a challenge there, which resulted in an ending on the deck. As you could see, it was Michael Rice. I think it was Rice who was coming in on top of him. So the uh, medical people just attending. Liam Sheedy certainly geeing up the crowd, supporting Tipperary. Meanwhile, 
Dr. Kevin Delargy from the Glens of Antrim, one of the team doctors in there to attend to the stricken Pat Kerwick. And there is a, a degree of concern you can see about that. Brian Cody, eight finals, ten years, what a record for the most successful manager in senior inter-county hurling. Yeah, here this we have save that again. Great, great flick across there by Pat Kerwick, great ball in. And in fairness, Callan did nothing wrong. Super shot, but a great save by PJ Ryan. And he made a brilliant save from Owen Kelly in the Waterford game as well. We all say that Kilkenny goalkeepers never get enough saves to get an All-Star. Maybe this year. Although we have Brendan Cummins and a few others to offer stiff resistance. Right now, the main prize is the All-Ireland. That's far, far more important for all of these players. Here's James Woodlock. Had a support player ahead of him. Didn't reach John O'Brien partly blocked by Michael Rice comes there to Owen Kelly who made a run out from full forward three players are after him gets the ball inside there towards Seamus Callan and fires it in off his left and puts it over the bar great score that was a hard work score by Tipperary and a first of the day for Seamus Callan so a point eventually for one of those on the half forward line worked in cleverly Callan took his chance great score one point the margin yeah, George, you have to say that Tipperary's half back line midfield are completely dominating now since half time, and, and their midfield, I think, were well on top in the first half. And you'd wonder when is Chaff Fitzpatrick going to come into the play? Five and a half minutes into the second half. Paddy Stapleton back there. They're still trailing. Out by Conor O'Mahony. Poor ball. Dropped there by Tommy Welsh, who was absolutely word and foot perfect in the first half. This time, support coming from John Tennyson. Oh, they've given it away again and an opportunity for Tipperary to put it over the bar, two in a row for Seamus Callanan. The drum and inch player really comes alive in the second half. Well, that time it was gifted to him anyway, but his shooting was unerring. Yeah, and I think the Kilkenny panel is going to be, they're all talking about they're the second best team in the country. Well, that's five points from playoff, Brian Hogan, Corbett got three in the first half, Callanan has got two now, how long more is he going to be left there? 13 points apiece and Conor O'Mahony, marvellous centre-half back that he is. All-star last year. This man has come of age in the last two years. This was wonderful fielding. Taking it up there ahead of Henry Shefflin. A doughty opponent. The great player he is. But uh, Conor O'Mahony was equal to it on this occasion. Good ball as far as Kalman. Fumbling. Holding on to it, however. Again, support arriving here. That time, Shane McGrath over his left shoulder, hitting, hoping, watching it drop over the bar. Shane McGrath from midfield gets his first, and it's Tipperary who are back in front in the All-Ireland final once again, 14-13. Yeah, uh, look, Tip Tipperary are worthy for that. You know, they've won every ball since the start of the second half. Kenny haven't got a ball past their half-forward line, and Tipperary are all over them and grown in confidence. And winning that ball on the half-back line, Declan Fanning. Then clever use of the ball, not just belting it away anywhere. Pat Kerwick diagonally across, O'Brien fumbles. That's enough to give Michael Rice an opportunity. In fact, it's his midfield partner there who gets in to help out. Stalemate situation. Referee's going to throw the ball in. It was indeed Rice who was uh, doing the spade work that time. Anyway, the referee's going to throw the ball in between two players. Derek Ling and Shane McGrath reporting for duty comes out one-handed away by John O'Brien Jackie Terrell facing back towards his own goal gets the assistance there of Michael Kavanagh the St Lockton's player from Freshford in County Kilkenny huge one down there in there to challenge is Richie Parr a point scorer in the first half towards the very very end of that first half this time he's dragged back and it's going to be a free in for Kilkenny and a chance for them to tap over the equaliser in the uh, ninth minute of the second half yeah he's been pulled there not much doubt about it He's been pulled back and uh, he's won a couple of great balls in there because Tariq Maher, one of his biggest strengths, is uh, under the high ball and Richie's after catching a couple of great balls in there now. Well, it's good to see Richie coming alive in this particular championship match. He was superb in the league as Henry Shefflin puts over his first point of the second half from the free. All of his scores have come from place balls this afternoon and it's Kilkenny 14 points, Tipperary 14 points. This is the 15th All-Ireland final there has been between Kilkenny and Tip front of a packed crowd, over 82,000 here in Croke Park. Short again to Paddy Stapleton, further out as far as Declan Fanning, and incrementally they get it in towards the forward line. Over the head of Noel McGrath, coming to take it here is Lark Hall with three points in the first half, back in again! That's wide, it was a glorious chance. Owen Kelly. It was saved again, Ger. but really Owen Kelly, normally nine times out of ten, that's in the back of the net, and 
really Tipperary are leaving Kilkenny in this game now they should have two goals scored brilliant pass by Corbett and Owen had oh. more time I think he had more time than he thought it really was a superb save absolutely brilliant a brilliant change of direction by Larry Corbett he was looking one way and passed it the other way and Owen just maybe slipped there as well when he was taking the shot and still had to be saved by TJ Ryan quite amazing that we haven't had any goals in this final so far Owen Kelly's come out to take it eight points his tally So, can Tip go back in front again? He's missed a 65 in the second half already. So now, has he the range? Has he got the direction? Has he the accuracy? The answer to all three questions, yes. Nine for Kelly, 15 for Tip. They lead by one. Marvellous All-Ireland hurling final. PJ Ryan to pocket out. gathered at half-back once again here out once again by Conor O'Mahony fed forward here towards John O'Brien John O'Brien soloing forward Rice is after him inside towards Pat Kerwig trying to turn back onto his left-hand side half hit that one JJ Delaney under pressure gets the ball away despite the attentions there of Owen Kelly but there are temporary players queuing up to take it one of them is Woodlock he is dispossessed brilliantly by Eddie Brennan there as far as Tommy Welch what pace, what drama we're watching here in Croke Park this afternoon wonderful, wonderful hurling that ball away as far as Declan Fanning, back once again into the mix there, taken brilliantly by Michael Kavanagh, a commanding figure, playing today in his 10th All-Ireland Hurling Final, getting it out into the middle as far as Derek Ling, feeding it forward there towards Aidan Fogarty, he hasn't scored so far, looking for his first score, back out as far as Richie Hogan, got one in the first half, where will this land? It lands over the bar, it's a brilliant score, what a reply by Kilkenny, the champions! Marvellous score under pressure by the Danes for its player, Richie Hogan, a cousin of DJ Carey, and the score 15 apiece. And it's Tipperary who are about to make a change. Benny Dunn coming in, and John O'Brien, the player who is the first to be replaced in this All Ireland final. He'll be disappointed. While well, Benny Dunn, I'm sure, is just itching to get into the action. He's got his opportunity, he's got time. 15 apiece, who's going to win it? Michael Rice blocked down there brilliantly by Shane McGrath. Comes back towards Seamus Caledon. On the ground, helped out here again. And the referee saw a foul there. And it's got to be a free to Tipperary. Well, the referee has uh, noted names in this match so far. Hasn't shown any yellow cards. Yeah, you know, I think the best you could say, Kilkenny are hanging in there. Since half time, the 12 minutes since half time, Kilkenny have, Tipperary have absolutely dominated the game, but still Kilkenny are level, and I think they'll take a bit of comfort They've in that. They've confounded a lot of what people have been saying at half time, where I've been hearing that uh, you know it's only a matter of time before Kilkenny become the assertive force that we know they are. That's it's Tipperary who's It's not going to happen today. Tipperary are a very, very fit team. Um, they're, going, they're young, they're hungry, and you know, the longer they stay in it, the better. But they have missed those couple of goal chances, which might work against them in the end. This one is pointed by Owen Kelly, point number 10 of the afternoon, his second of the second half, and his Tipperary 16 points, Kilkenny 15. Kilkenny were the favourites coming in, why wouldn't they be? They've won it for the last three years. People everywhere and anywhere were looking for a right good challenge to come from Tipperary, and Tipperary have served up that wonderful challenge. Now who's going to win it? Away out of defence by Paul Curran, the school teacher based in Clonmel. Gets it out here as far as the left half back, John Tennyson. The other left half for Tipperary, Brendan Marr, racing out there with Henry Shefflin, the 20 year old against the pass master of All Ireland finals. What a pick up by Henry Shefflin. Beautiful skill inside towards Richie Parr. Breaks loose to Porrick Maher, under pressure from a group of Kilkenny players. One of them manages to foul him. Maher's on the ground. It's going to be a free out for Tipperary. A match which has absolutely everything, except goals. He's got to get hit very hard there as well. Well, let's just have a look at this again and see what did happen to young Porrick Maher. 
Oh, yeah. The elbow was there as well. It was well, Aidan Fogarty yeah, coming it was Aiden across. Yeah, you know, in fairness, there was, but he Not dipped, necessarily he dipped, intentional. Well, no, I think he dipped his head a bit just going into the tackle. Yeah. If, you, if, you look at it in, if you look at it in the replay, but he got hit very, very hard. Yeah. He seems to be in a lot of, a lot of discomfort there. And you remember back, Michael, to the uh, monster final, Tipperary against Waterford, and the difficulties that Tipperary had in their full back line this up, that afternoon. I mean, they took Paul Curran off, you remember. They did, yeah. But this is, um, maybe it's, it's part of the modern game, but maybe, you know, don't like to see too much. Of, teams are so strong now and so physical, and there's a lot of that sort of lads are coming out, and there's players coming in very, very hard from all angles, and, you know, you are going to situations where he's back on his feet, thankfully. There's got to be a change, and TJ Reid's got to come on for Aidan Fogarty. So he becomes the first change made by the Kilkenny manager. And that is interesting because people might have expected that Chop, it's Patrick, or Martin Comerford in particular, would have been the first in. But it's uh, TJ Reid who's come in. He got four points, remember, in the All-Ireland final last year against Waterford when he came on as a substitute. Let's see what he can do today. 16-15, Tipperary leading. Broken down towards Noel McGrath. Helped here towards Seamus Callanan. Under pressure immediately from Kilkenny. And Kilkenny have the ball. And Jackie Tyrrell in particular. Getting it away down the field towards Richie Power. Reaching up for it. A recovered Porik Maher. That's brilliant by the young fullback. Listen to the Tipperary fans. As he gets that ball into the inside forward line once again. Rolling it up into the stick. There was Jackie Tyrrell trying to do so. It's a stalemate situation. Referee allows it to develop. It's still developing. And it comes out to Kerwick. Kerwick. Can't do anything with it. Brian Hogan has it. Spooning it back there towards JJ Delaney. Under pressure from Noel McGrath. Poor clearance. Out it comes into the middle and it's Woodlock across towards a free player. It's Benny Dunn going over there. The new man in. Having to go around a number of players, around Eddie Brennan in particular. Back towards Kerwick it comes. Now what kind of progress can they make from this attack? That's the shot and that's a poor final effort by Pat Kerwick and he is yet to score in this final. A lot yeah. of hard work, no end product. I'll go back to the and Michael Fennelly, who is the team captain, now gets his chance to come into midfield. And Derek Ling makes way. Yeah, I think that the, the, the thinking of Brian Cody here is TJ Reid and Michael Fennelly are younger players. They have a lot of pace, and maybe you know Martin. Conf that's what they're lacking. They're getting bit for every 50-50 ball all over the field, and he's looking to inject a bit of life into the team. Well, it happened with Tyrone a couple of weeks ago against Cork, and it might well be happening for Kilkenny as well, but they have a lot of time. We're in the 17th minute of the second half. Lark Horvath from a huge distance. He can do little wrong this afternoon. He's on a roving commission way out the field. Three points in the first half. Make it now four. And it's 17 points to 15. Four shots. Four points from Lar. Through the middle, the puck out comes. Picked up here in the centre by the racing Eddie Brennan. Three points in the first half was his tally. Needs assistance. Into the centre here to Michael Fennelly. Fennelly striking from 45 metres out and wanting to lay down a marker immediately. Good score. That's one back. One point between them on a match which hasn't produced any goals so far, but there's still plenty of time. Midway through the second half. Yeah, that was great play by Eddie Brennan, but you notice he was covered by the three temporary players and Shane McGrath's pace came into play there and he had to play it back outside, he did very well. Martin Comerford will be coming in, it seems, very shortly. The short puck out of here as far as Brendan Maher. From left half back, it's cut out across over there and delivered back down into the danger area towards TJ Reid. Well, can he exert the same kind of influence? You might remember back to 2007, by the way, Richie Park came on as a sub then as well. He also got four points in that final. Yeah, but in those finals, you know, maybe the games were won when they came yeah, on. They now were. the pressure is on now to deliver. It's easy to come on when you're 10 or 12 Absolutely. times up and score a few points. The line ball to be taken by Brendan Maher from Borussia Catches it really well, it flies through the air into the half forward. Oh, that was a wild swipe there. And the referee is going to take action against Benny Dunn, I think. Now Benny, had, very definitely the guilty party. The greatest of credit to Tommy Walsh, he's straight back up on his feet. I think a lot of other players would have stayed down, but it's still a red card, John. It's a red card. <laughs> Tipperary lose their substitute, Benny Dunn and will play out the remaining minutes of this match with 14 men. 
Well, nobody wants to see it, as you say. Tommy Walsh got back up onto his feet immediately, but the uh, foul blow penalised by the referee, Dermot Kerwin, and Liam Sheedy has to battle now with one man less. Yeah, he was a long way away from the ball. Now, we haven't seen a replay of it yet, but it was a reckless pull and uh, you know you don't like to see any player being sent off in the Ireland final and T Tommy Walsh got back up on his feet straight away as well not hurt but uh, he did strike that's off the ball that's not the point that's not the point no, no. strike off the ball Henry Shefflin hitting this one from the free and putting it over the bar it's a magnificent shot by Henry Shefflin from such a huge distance seven points for yeah, Shefflin you see watch this Tommy again pulled straight across oh. Oh, very dangerous straight into the face and I think Tommy Walsh just showed if anyone wanted to the toughness that we just got he went down got straight back up on his feet didn't in any way try to get the player sent off but he had to go for that that's back out as far as Brendan Maher from the puck out now Tipperary really have it all to do and it's going to be a free in that time Owen Kelly fouled free in for Owen Kelly a chance for him to get his 11th point in this final yeah and I think there's been three or four of those instant balls like that since half time and Tip have won the freeze. Rightly so, maybe they've been held back, but in the first half they weren't getting them. So maybe the yellow card here. Liam Sheedy's um, for JJ it, Delaney. Liam Sheedy's intervention at half time maybe has unsettled Dermot Curran a little bit. Could and made well. him look a bit closer at those incidents. I'm not trying to make excuses for Benny Dunn because it was a very, very foul blow, as you say. But I think he was frustrated sitting on the bench, waiting for his chance to come out, show what he could do. Unfortunately, he was probably too pumped up. Probably was. It happens. Owen Kelly to strike this. He's going to go for the goal, I think. OK, Mystic Meg Dignan's at it again. It's slightly at an angle. It's not absolutely central. It's saved. And once again, PJ Ryan makes a magnificent stop. OK, he had support behind him and he went for it, but it was a good save. Three saves in the second half now by PJ Ryan. First class, each one of them and it remains at 17 points apiece. Well, Kelly knows what he's doing there, Jerry. No, he knows with the power he has, if it's saved, good chance to go over the bar out for 65, and you know, now he has a chance to tap it over. Unless he misses the 65, there's nothing lost, really. There's still about 14 minutes left in this final. The last drawn final, exactly 50 years ago. I think Kilkenny will be amazed they're still in this game. You know, unlimited possession, it's a draw match, it's nearly unbelievable. It's just their vast experience, and, and they're sticking it out. So from the 65 centrally positioned straight over it's Tipperary 18 it's Kilkenny 17 and it's 11 points for Kelly which is you know really showing his back to full form seven frees two 65s and two from play an unbelievable return well the scoring chances already in the second half in the opening 22 minutes Tipperary have created 13 scoring chances against just four for Kilkenny. That tells its own story. This is rolled up brilliantly by Owen Kelly. What a match he's playing. Great to see him back. Will it curl in sufficiently inside that left-hand post? The umpires look at it, decide yes. Great score. Another from play for Kelly. That's 12 out of 19. What a match. Two between them. The 14 men are beating the champions of the past three years. Is the four in a row still on? Plenty of time. Wonderful tension, wonderful enjoyment everywhere and anywhere. Great displays. Lots of young people, lots of new names coming to the fore this year. Brendan Maher has come up from the underage ranks, ready to cut this one now beautifully in he's made a good 40 meters Brian Hogan catches this one drives the ball away down by Fanning that time picked up here well by Richie Power well chased after by Shane McGrath and Shane McGrath drives it in but he puts it to the right might have been a little bit more patient and more accurate with his delivery because Owen Kelly was waiting for a decent ball in he is, but he's having some game and Michael Kavanagh, Michael Kavanagh has been deployed as the extra man there's Benny Dunn sitting up in the stand and I'm sure he's very very disappointed but Michael Kavanagh I don't like cornerbacks being the extra man because he's back there and nobody knows who to go for, you know who should go for the ball and sometimes it works against I think he should move somebody up front and go for the juggler and here is that extra man that you were talking about and he's under pressure immediately from Seamus Callanan and this one off the post and over the bar a little bit of help required but Seamus Callanan has hit three points in the second half 
and that was an error by Michael Kavanagh. He should have got the ball away. He had time, but the sheer eagerness, sheer anticipation, and never say die attitude of Tipperary is now very much coming to the fore. They have players who are prepared to die for the calls this afternoon. Young and old. There's one of the youngsters, 18-year-old Noel McGrath. Bit of a rush of blood to the head the way he hit that one, however. And that is now a total of eight whites. They still lead by three. Yeah, and they've really dominated the second half all over the field. And, you know, I think Kenny are just going to have to bring on somebody up front and throw caution to the wind because they don't look like scoring a goal at all at this stage. But you never know with Kenny, but at this stage, Tipperary are all over them. And once again, that ball is knocked away by Conor O'Mahony. Not terribly far. Here's TJ Reid looking to make the impact that he made 12 months ago. Great looking delivery and over the bar. TJ Reid emulating what Michael Fennelly, another sub, did earlier on, getting among the scores. So two points the difference. It's 20 points to 18. TJ Reid with his first. Yeah, it's a brilliant score again from Reid, and that's what Kilkenny have done all day. They've, they've hardly missed a chance that they've had. They've missed none in the second half. Five from five. Five from five. They're, you know, they're just sticking in there and showing their class. Kerwick with a great catch, that's brilliant, going by Tennyson, angling the shot in, into the side netting. Ten minutes to go. Yeah, maybe that's three or four wides now, you know, from, from Tipperary, from, from difficult positions. They're better off to keep it into Corbett and Kelly inside, both of them are on fire, and all they should be doing is just playing the ball into those two all the time. Will Kilkenny add to their 31 titles so far? Will Tip get their 26th? Coming through here. Henry Shefflin. And that one is over the bar somehow. Eight for Henry Shefflin. Rivaling Owen Kelly, who's got 12 so far for the individual scoring honour of the day. But it's all about taking the Liam McCarthy Cup. One between them. And Jerry, you have to remember the result with Kilkenny. You know, as I said a few times already, they're sticking in there. Martin Comfort, a lovely ball, but Shefflin was an impossible angle. TJ Reid's previous score. You know, and they're just they're showing what they're made of great champions and even though they've been under pressure for most of the game they're still in it Noel McGrath hitting this one and Noel McGrath has put it over the bar his opening score when he hit that one over Tipperary we're actually down to 13 men because Declan Fanning was down with an injury with a cramp he's back on his feet again it's 21-19 and it's absolutely thrilling hope you're enjoying it TJ Ryan ready to take this the 32 year old goalkeeper very intelligent hurling by McGrath. He, he ran 70 yards across the field to take that ball. Oh, that, a slip by Conor O'Mahony. Here's an opportunity. Fed inside there, in for power. Trying to get away from the attentions of a couple of players. One of them, Paul Curran. And it's a penalty. And they go out straight away to remonstrate with referee Dermot Kerwin. That was interesting. Where did that happen? It took that look. I think it looked very harsh. I think Comerford forgave the ball a bit too early and put power under pressure and he was trying to borrow his way through. We'll have to have another look at it now, but it looked like he ran out. I, I just serious he, questions about that. He was running out of space. There would be twice as many serious questions if he scores it. Well, the first happen foul happened outside for sure. Here's coming for true now. Passed the ball that little bit early, I thought. There's power. He's held up there. Not a whole lot wrong with that. Hurling over the neck. Oh, he just about made the large square eventually. Yeah, but you'd even doubt was it a free, you know. Well, it is a penalty, and it's Henry Shefflin who's going to take it. There are three on the goal line. Porik Maher, Brendan Commons is there as well, and also Conor O'Mahony. Commons is ready. Is Shefflin is as well. He's got eight points so far. They need it. It's in the back of the net. Henry Shefflin cracks in his 22nd ever championship goal, and it's 119 to 21 points. 22, 21, the goal coming in the 63rd minute yeah an absolute rocket rocket from Shefflin straight well, over the head of Parik Maher and no, there's no seven in that it'll be a big big talking point however the award of the penalty now will that energise Kilkenny who were giving second best but were never prepared to give way completely to Tipperary back come the team looking for four in a row back comes Owen Larkin one point so far in for Coverford it's in the back of the net Two in a row! The game has turned around and the substitute Martin Comerford scores in the 64th minute. 
It's two goals, one from a penalty, one from play, in the space of 60 seconds, and it has turned around the 2009 All-Ireland Hurling Final, and Kilkenny feel they're on their way to victory. There's still six minutes to play, heartbreak for Tipperary, but full credit to the commitment and the character of Kilkenny, not to mention their marvellous skill. Henry Shefflin with a goal and eight points so far, having a go from an enormous distance out, Brendan Cummins. There's only four points between them, and Tipperary are shattered right now, but they've got to remain composed, they have time. 14 against 15, five minutes left and maybe a little bit more with added time. So perhaps there's as much as seven minutes still left in this final. Yeah, and Joe, I, that's uh, Henry Shefflin I've been spoken to by the ref, but, but a few minutes ago there, I said about maybe Kilkenny not looking like scoring a goal, and this is what makes them special. Now, the free was fortuitous. At best, it was, you know, it was a 50-50 ball. Uh, great goal by Shefflin, did straight away. But what a pass by Owen Larkin into Comerford, and great finish, and, uh, you know, as you say, they're temporarily can't panic. They've had a few chances. They need to just plug away now and try to stay in this game. Owen Kelly ready to hit this. He's already got 12 points. Pat Kerwick has just gone off. Willie Ryan's just come on. He's also the team captain, of course. Oh, miss hit completely. Straight to Michael Rice. And Rice will look that gift and take it with him deep out of the Kilkenny half. Lashing it down towards Richie Power, races beyond him, runs it there. Picking it up here, Paddy Stapleton, he's tripped, went over the outstretched legs of Richie Power, free to Tipperary. Well, that was baffling there, that miss hit by Owen Kelly. It's going to be a free which Brendan Cummins will take. 66 minutes approaching, gone in the game. 20 metres out from the Kilkenny goal. Tommy Walsh somehow got that ball again, fed out as far as the centre-half back, Brian Hogan, slipped out here as far as Michael Fennelly, from a famed Fennelly fan, family down in uh, Ballyhale in County Kilkenny, of course. Here's Owen Larkin, trying to make an angle for himself, man who made the second goal. Well, that one's gone wide. The seconds tick away, however, four wides for Kilkenny. Haven't played as well as they played in uh, the last couple of finals, but then Tipperary didn't let them. Yeah, I think they played very well. I think it's been a great game, but just Tipperary brought a fierce challenge here, and they were still in this game. Certainly Aris. Lark Orba tries to open it up here. Willie Ryan couldn't take it up, but it's picked up instead by another man with a yellow helmet. That is Seamus Callanan. Feeding it in towards Noel McGrath. Could he yet be the star? Oh! That went off the stick of the goalkeeper and it's gone over the bar and Noel McGrath's got a second but PJ Ryan wasn't taking any chances and tapped it over as well and there are three points between them, 25-22 or 2.19 to 22 points. This was Noel McGrath again, watch for the goalkeeper deciding best uh, course of action is just to help it over. Yeah, and he's very sharp today, that's three or four times he's been called on and hasn't been found wanting. Oh, we're going to have a very, very tense conclusion to this wonderful final. There's Jackie Terrell, and Terrell trying to get among the scores, and why not? Jackie Terrell puts it over the bar. It's only his second ever championship point. Is it now going to ensure victory for the Cats? It's a brilliant score by Terrell, but I think he's lucky he went on oh. Larkin here again now. Larkin now, the more composed Kilkenny players, but that final effort leaving a lot to be desired. But the previous ball, when Terrell put it over, Larkin was on his own inside Roanford, but a Terrell, great score from 90 yards, 100 yards. A couple of untypical errors have been made in the last 5-10 minutes. So much tension about the place. The prize a huge one. Lark Orbit, what a match he's played. Four points. Oh, he's given it away to Tommy Welsh. Tommy, who's been a star all through. Way down there. Collected once again by Brendan Maher or by uh, Porik Mahar, I should say, his namesake. Staying on his feet there, just about, was Callan and into Woodlock. Woodlock trying to engineer it, score for Tipperary. Just a minute and a half of the 70 still to go. There's got to be another change, and it'll be Mihal Webster who will come in. So a chance for him to do something as a replacement for James Woodlock. Is there a goal yet in Tipperary?
Owen Kelly ready to hit this one, some 50 metres from the target. Straight once again, nicely accurate, and just over the bar. 13 points for Owen Kelly. Is it going to be enough, however? Three points the margin. There's confirmation of the uh, latest change by Tipperary, who trail by three. Final minute, and now it's a case of how many minutes will be added on by the referee as added time. Collected in the middle of the park by Martin Comerford once again, the man who was left out of the team at the start of the game. I was bitterly disappointed to have suffered that fate, but he came back and got the second goal and maybe the crucial one for the Cats. Who knows? Flying in there once again, Webster couldn't take it. Comes out towards Brian Hogan. There'll be two added minutes to be played, so two minutes and 20 seconds still to go of the 2009 final. That's a huge one down towards Eddie Brennan. This time stymied, however, by Paul Curran. The cornerback fouled on his way out. Tipperary want to get the ball away quickly. It'll be Brendan Cummins who will take the free out. They need a goal, three points between the teams. Huge one, dropping 20 metres out from the Kilkenny goal. Hogan goes up for it. Is there a goal in Tipperary yet? The backs combining well, coming out to take it here. The marvellous Tommy Welch out as far as Michael Cavanaugh, who's had a free roll since the sending off of Benny Dunn. Dropped there by Declan Fanning, collected here by Owen Larkin. We're into stoppage time, a minute and 40 seconds still to be played. Larkin dancing away from the challenge of Paddy Stapleton and driving it over the bar. Two for Owen Larkin in this final, another for Kilkenny. They stretch the lead to four points, it's 221 to 23 points, and we're in the 71st minute. It's another brilliant score by Larkin, you know, at this stage of the game to have that type of pace and power, unbelievable. This time it's John Tennyson, another man with a red helmet on the half-back line, getting it out there as far as TJ Reid. Huge one back down towards Eddie Brennan, batted out there by Porrick Maher. The full-back for Tipperary has played his heart out. Looks to be tiring, however. This time it's collected by Richie Power, and Kilkenny have time. They have the lead, they have the ball as well to Owen Larkin, and they have a point, and Larkin's got a third. And surely now, that's a winning score. Surely now, the champions of the last three years are not going to be denied by a late goal by Tipperary. It's looking like four in a row. It's looking like a repeat of what Cork did in the early 40s, from 1941 to 1944. Except this time, it's Brian Code who's done it. Brian Cody's already got six All-Ireland victories, ten Leinsters, five National Leagues and 11 seasons. Surely the most successful manager there has ever been of a senior inter-county hurling team. Brendan Marr cutting it in. Tip will believe there is still some hope if they can get a goal. But they need more than a goal at this stage. They're behind by five points. They need two. They have possession. Porik Maher. The two minutes have almost now been played by match referee Dermot Kerwin. That bounces back out here again towards McGrath. Comes back once again and it's collected by Tommy Wells. Tommy Wells has the ball. Kilkenny have the trophy. It's Kilkenny who are the All-Ireland champions for 2009. They are the first team to do four in a row since the 1940s. They've come from a position where they look to be a losing team at the early stages of the second half. But Brian Cody's team had character. They had key players in key areas. They had leaders all over the field. They've shown us what marvellous hurlers they are. Tipperary, to give them their due, gave it everything they had. I've no doubt in my mind there's an All-Ireland in this Tipperary team. The tears are falling from young eyes at this stage. Tipperary eyes. But Tipperary can be proud because they put it up to the Cats this afternoon. And we had a memorable final at Croke Park. Shane McGrath played his heart out, but there was the one team a little better this afternoon, and that was Kilkenny. They had 32 scoring chances. They managed to take 24 of those. 36 scoring chances, more than Kilkenny had, were created by Tip. They took 23. They needed goals. They lost a man, Benny Dunn, who was sent off on the second top. Michael, just sum it up for us. Well, it's difficult. What a game of hurling, first and foremost. And, you know, halfway through the second half, uh, Tipperary were all over. For the first 20 minutes of the second half, Tipper all over Kilkenny. Um, Benny Dunn sending off was a factor, but I thought the two goal chances that they missed was a bigger was a bigger factor. Owen Kelly missed a great chance. And uh, at the end of the day, I have to say, this Kilkenny team deserve it. They're the greatest team I've ever seen. They deserve to win four in a, all Ireland in a row. Tipperary can be very, very proud of themselves. They produced some marvellous hurling all over the field. 
I thought Shane McGrath in the middle of the field, Owen Kelly and Larry Corbett, and Seamus Callan, brilliant up front for them. But at the end of the day, T. Kenny just kept plugging away, kept plugging away. They had massive confidence in themselves, and I thought their substitutions, Martin Comfort and Michael Fennelly and TJ Reid, they brought that bit of pace into the team at a crucial time, and they went on to win the game. There'll be questions tonight maybe about the the penalty that was given but I don't think you can take away from it the greatest team we've ever seen the won the four learns in a row and nobody can take it from them fantastic achievement well right now the presentation will take place out in the middle of the park which is what the GE authorities wanted to see happen the fans are remaining in the stands they're remaining up there in the terraces there'll be a huge crowd I'm sure to welcome Kilkenny back tomorrow night to the Marble City they deserve a huge crowd Goal, the charity, deserve a big, big crowd as well in Nolan Park. That's on Wednesday at 6.30 for the Gold Challenge, the opposition provided by Valley Hill Shamrocks, the Kilkenny County champions. Today, it's all about Kilkenny, but it's all about hurling as well, because we got a great final. We were dying to get a good final after the awful, wretched finals we had in the last couple of years. And credit to Ferrari in particular for putting it up to the Cats. We wanted a team that would give them a big challenge. You know, back in March, I was in Nolan Park, when they Tipperary were hammered by Kilkenny that afternoon in the league by 17 points. They were behind by 20 and, and a half. The crowd, the crowd had broken out of the hill. Um, the stewards were under not the pressure out there. Uh, it could be mayhem here now because the players are out in the middle of the field. And well, they are. They are breaking I, I, in. I'd say it for the safety reasons because they were coming down from the hill and let's hope nobody's hurt now because they're coming out only through one place they stopped them in another spot over in the corner they're just going to have to let them out well I have to leave them out at this stage because it would be dangerous to try and pen them in because this could create a very and here very they are now out in the field but you were saying there John about Nolan Park they did hammer well, them they, they were hammered that day and then in the league final we saw a real battle by Tipperary today I think we've seen a team a <laughs> plan B yeah well, but, but Jared, the one thing that you can't the one thing you can't quantify in hurling is hunger and desire and Tipperary hadn't won a final since 2001 they had 12 players in their first final and Kilkenny did look a bit stale out there today and a bit tired but what got them through was just pure heart heart and guts and determination they kept plugging away and plugging away and Tipperary helped them you have to say by missing those couple of chances but that's why they're the great champions they are and here we are now with the crowd out in the field and look at this there's going to be now we've got a complete mess we have a mess now you you, we have a mess now because I don't know what they're going to do. I think they're going to have to maybe bring them up into the stand now. You have this makeshift uh, sta uh, stand going up here. I don't know what's going to happen. But in fairness to the crowd, you know, four in a row, it doesn't happen too often. Once we're back in the 40s, and it's it was always going to be hard. If Tip won the game, there was absolutely no way to keep uh, them up. It would field. have been the same thing. Yeah, and you have to say, look, you can understand where the GA are coming from. You know, like it is about health and safety. Yeah. But Sir made a good time before the game. We're gone too compliant, if you ask me, in everything in this country, you know, from... In, in life has gone very very compliant but the, I think the cup is still above in the stand and uh, the players are the players are not sure what to do I'm sure they'll probably end up going up there now as well I think the, that's what the going two on. youngsters we got a little glim glimpse of there up at the presentation stand with the cup two young people there with the cup they are Keith Foster and Raul Perdice and Raul I'm told is originally from Mauritius and they were going to bring out the cup they're from uh, O'Connell schools yeah, and maybe just a very special mention, maybe to four players today, to the lads winning their seventh All Ireland medal. You know, isn't it four? Michael Kavanagh, uh, Eddie Brennan, Henry Shefflin. Just the three of them is there, is there a fourth one? Kind of we may not ever see enough. such a wonderful group, so wonderfully right. prepared. They are the two youngsters there that I was telling you about. There's the little lad from Mauritius. His name, as I mentioned, is Raoul Perdice, and the other boy is Keith Foster. So there there to share in the presentation on what is a huge occasion for them a huge occasion for all of us those of us who love this most brilliant game and today we got an example of some of the great skills of the match and thoroughly enjoyed it um, and Martin Comerford was the other one Jerry was trying to think of I knew there was four of them but seven all Ireland medals you know in the modern era with, with competition so intense and team so well prepared and so fit and Michael Cavanagh playing in his 10th final and who, look that's going to drive them on next year to come back and try to equal Christy Ring and John Ryle we, we, we also Michael got a glimpse of the future we got young Richie Hogan we were dying to see him play and we've got on the Tipperary side the Mars Porrick Marr Brendan Marr Noel McGrath got two points in the second half don't Shemus forget Callum. Seamus Callum's only 20 years of age that's right yeah you know? look at we've said it over the, over the last six months Tipperary will win all Ireland in the next five years they'll win two or three in the next five but this Kilkenny team you know, the one thing it says, Richie Hogan is the only under 21. We talk about their strength and depth, but they were back relying. Tommy Walsh was absolutely immense. Uh, JJ Delaney, I thought, particularly in the first half. Um, Eddie Brennan, a great first half at three points. 
and Sheffield kept plugging away and Owen Larkin again with three points. So they have so many points to their attack. I say Martin Comfort coming on. They have they have it all over the field. They, they were dominated in the middle of the field by Tipperary and yet they just clung in there and clung in there and clung in there and finished the stronger. And people talk about the fitness of every other team, but this was incredible. And look, well done to Kilkenny, hard luck to tip. They produced one of the great finals over the last maybe 10, 15 years. Well, now we're looking at the presentation platform here. Christy Cooney, of course, GA president, his first year in charge and his first major senior presentation. Michael Fennelly is the Kilkenny captain. He didn't lead them out on the field. You remember that was Henry Shefflin, but Michael Fennelly is the captain. Brian Cody is the manager, and what a manager he is. His uh, backroom team deserve all the credit as well. Martin Fogarty and Michael Dempsey as well. Mick Dempsey, whom I've known for quite a while, back to his leash football days and he's come into Kilkenny as we heard in that little piece before the start of the match and he has contributed handsomely and now Uchter on coming to Luke Laskell, Christy Cooney Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Cumberland Glasgow, in this special 125th year of our celebration, may I heartily congratulate Tipperary and Kilkenny for giving us an outstanding game of hurling. Your equipment, the what your clubs, your families, your counties, and your management. You deserve an enormous accolade for the wonderful game of honour you gave us today. I have no doubt that Tipperary are bitterly disappointed. You played an outstanding part and what was an outstanding final. And I have no doubt your turn will come and you will be back here next year. Please God to lift here. How oh God is Tip for Dawn. But without doubt, the team of the decade has been Kilkenny. A truly outstanding team of hurlers and panther hurlers that have brought great credit to this association to achieve what you achieved today in winning four in a row and bringing Greeny McMahon back once again to the door is a truly remarkable achievement for you all. But I sincerely thank our sponsors, Etihad, RT Sport and Guinness for their outstanding support and sponsorship over the past number of years. And finally now, it gives me great pleasure to present Lee McCarthy to an outstanding captain and leader in Michael Fenley. So Christy Cooney, the GEA president, handing over the Liam McCarthy Cup, fourth year in a row to a Kilkenny captain, Liam Fenley. And that, Michael Fennelly rather, Brian Cody, all of Kilkenny celebrating four in a row. Well, there is concern still, obviously, about the fact that they have erected a barrier to where they should have been holding the, uh, the presentation. A very proud Michael Fennelly. It gives me great honour and privilege to lift Lee McCarthy Cup for a fourth year row on behalf of the superb and most talented to Kenny team and management. This year, unique four in a row success could not have been achieved without the dedication, commitment from all the players and management. But 
but also those people back home in Kilkenny who, who developed our rage system back in the 1990s. The work done then has contributed to this four in a row achievement. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Zambia, who have been with us over, over the last decade. Every year they chase us out with the highest quality of gear. We have a great relationship and sponsorship from Colombia and I hope it's, it, it continues for the coming years. To our backroom staff, they have been there for us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Starting with our physios, Robbie Lodge, Claire Lodge, Roisin, our doctor, Ty Crowley, our nutritionist, Noreen Roach, our player support, Sir Dennis, Rapper, Cody. Our selectors, Mark Foley, Mick Dempsey, our fitness trainer, Noel Richardson, and lastly, our trainer. This man has managed to kill any for the last decade. I believe his CV, CV stands at seven all Irons in 10 years. He really does not need an introduction. He's acknowledged as one of the greatest managers uh, in the world. His name is Brian Cody. <laughs> to our supporters, what can I say? The last four years have been unbelievable. You've been really and truly the backbone to this to this four in a row, and, and you're always behind this Kilkenny team. We'll see some of you back in the Sea West tonight, and we'll see the rest of you in the whole coming tomorrow night. <laughs> I'd like to thank Tipperary. I know lads, you'll be disappointed, but the last two years, lads, have been supreme for yourselves. You have two in a row Munster finals, back to back. You have a league final medal. Lads, I have no doubt, over the next five years, you'll be the top contenders for this Liam McCarthy Cup. I wish each and every one of you the very best of luck in your club careers and county careers. Hip hip for Tipperary. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. And lastly, a lovely thoughtful speech by Michael Fennelly. We don't have 2007. We don't have 3 2008. The final and score is Kilkenny, two goals and 22 points. Tipperary, 23 points.